interesting. So I'm going to come at it from a little bit different perspective. Um, I'm Marshall Smith. I'm the Vice President of Exploration at Voyager Space. Um, I started at Voyager about a year and a half ago. Before that, I spent about 37 years at NASA, so I'm probably older than most of you. I spent more time at NASA than most of you are, are old. So uh, uh, what I ended up doing, though, at the end, uh, as I was basically over for human exploration, architecture, where are we going beyond LEO, where, how, are we, how do we go back to the moon, what does the manifest look like, what are the systems we're going to build. So I'm going to take a little time and talk to you a little bit about deep space exploration from a NASA perspective, because I've got the publicly available charts, and I can explain a little bit. And then I'll throw in a few things about some of the stuff you heard earlier. Also, I'll throw in a few things about uh, what Voyager's doing in those, those areas as well. So first off, this is the plan that NASA's going with, and it's a good plan, partly because I helped help write it. Uh, so I'm, I'm good with it. Um, <clears throat> but you know what we're doing is we're trying to get to Mars. If you go look at the congressional uh, statements that are out there, we're going to go to Mars. How do we get there? So going through the moon is a great place to, to be. So we've been working to go to Leo. Uh, we've been in Leo, low Earth orbit, for quite a while. Um, We've been ISS, we've been permanently uh, stationed on ISS for 20 plus years, a couple decades. Uh, we've developed commercial cargo and commercial crew programs. Um, we've been testing Mars analogs on the ground. All of those things are great, uh, but now it's time to move on. And recently, uh, Artemis, the Artemis program, which is the, the get us to go back to the moon for the first step, uh, we just completed the first test flight. There was an uncrewed test flight. I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a minute, but that was an SLS block one with the Orion. It went and did a uh, fairly complex mission around the moon. So that's the beginning, the first steps of going back to the moon and testing out systems that are necessary to go to the moon and Mars and beyond. Uh, we will have the HLS system, which is a, a human landing system for the moon, landing on the moon. That's obviously not a picture of what the system was. Uh, it's a generic picture. I've got a better picture in a minute. Uh, but we'll also need to be building up capabilities like Surface, ut surface utilities, how do we do power, how do we do communications, um, how do we move around, what mobile habitats, are they fixed habitats, maybe it's some of both. Uh, terrain vehicles, landing on the surface of the moon, moving around on the surface of the moon, hopping to where these resources are. I think you saw some pictures, I'll show you another picture in a minute from the surface of the moon. Like dealing with power on the surface of the moon is a very, very big deal. And you just heard Alex talk about that as well. Um, so all of these things are directly transferable to Mars. Matter of fact, the goal in the, in the whole architecture is to build the things for Mars and make tweaks for the moon, test them out on the moon where you're days away instead of months away, test them out on the moon, use them and improve them, and then go use those systems on, on Mars. So to do that, there's a lot of technology that still needs to be developed. First of all, we need to be able to get there. You heard uh, talking about uh, space systems. How do we make that more cost, eff uh, cost effective? Sustainability, in my definition of sustainability, is that we keep, keep doing it, not that we go do a bunch of Apollo missions and we quit because it's too expensive, because we don't have the will to do it. It has to be affordable. It has to be something that people want to do, and there's a reason to do it. So we need to have safe and rapid systems. So what, what uh, Gary's pulling on is, is a really good point. How do you make that cost effective? Um, there are technologies that need to be developed for that. For example, some of the stuff you heard with nuclear, nuclear power for going to Mars. Also, uh, operating in cislunar space is very uh, important. Uh, how do we keep cryogenic fluids from, from boiling away? I mean, we need to be able to store our fluids for long durations. So cryofluid management is a big deal. Precision landing. What if you landed in one place and you have your crew in one place and you can, the closest you can land another piece of equipment is five kilometers away? Well, how are they going to get to it? You know, they, they can't really walk to it. It's pretty, pretty far. So we need to be able to land safely, close together. Um, there's a lot of in innovations that have to happen with respect to satellites. We need geocom. We need communications capability. We just take it for granted. We got a GPS system. You get out, you get on your phone. You go, okay, I got to go so-and-so. Don't even look at maps anymore. You don't have that ability on the moon or Mars. So we need to be able to have communica uh, communication systems. We need to have to be able to have, um, um, we also need to be able to have uh, um, uh, power systems that we can uh, depend on. How can we use the resources that are there? One of the biggest costs of doing business is getting mass from the surface of the Earth all the way to the surface of the moon or surface to Mars. Huge penalty for going to Mars, by the way. So. If I don't have to take oxygen, if I don't have to take water, if I don't have to take um, 
other types of fuel that I can make from those things. That's a massive, massive savings for us. And again, in creating the sustainability. So, so I'll put the Voyager plug in now. We're involved in all sectors of that. We're, we are working on ISRU. We have capability. Uh, we're working on the capability to create iron, for example, from the lunar regolith. We've demonstrated that. Um, we can also de develop uh, oxygen and water from lunar regolith, of course. Uh, once we have lunar, uh, lunar water deposits, we'll be able to do that as well. Uh, we're involved in um, all kinds of payload opportunities, small sats with nanorex, for example. Uh, we're doing uh, Leo Commute, the very first slide, I'll just go back to real quick. We're building Starlab, which is a huge, uh, it's about 37% of the uh, ISS capability for pressurized volume, 100% of the payload capacity. That's just step one. We're gonna build multiple versions of this that'll be devoted to research, some will be devoted to entertainment, some will be devoted to tourism, some will be devoted to manufacturing, those types of things. And of course, we'll use the LEO platform for developing systems to go, to go forward. I'm being given the yank. I gotta <laughs> so um, moving on, so you know, actually I'll do, go to this slide first. So there's a bunch of missions. We just completed Artemis 1, NASA did. I say we still, because I got a long time saying it. NASA just completed uh, Artemis 1, which I said was a very challenging mission. It's what's called to a distant retrograde orbit. It uh, has a lot of burns. It sits out in deep space for a long time, so you cold soak the systems. Phenomenally successful, fantastic uh, system. It worked really well. Artemis 2, you see on the upper right, that is a uh, lunar flyby. We were sending crew up for the first time. We're testing the crew systems out. Artemis 3 is the first mission to the surface of the moon. And I'll show you a second some of the major components there. We'll be going to what's called a near rectilinear halo orbit. And we chose that orbit because uh, we want to put assets in lunar orbit for very high efficiency. You don't have to have a lot of fuel to keep them there. And that would be the gateway and other systems that we would put up there. And then Artemis 4, we started into sustainability. We're going back to the moon to stay. We're going back again and again and again, and we're building systems and using, using the gateway as we move forward. Oops. So looking at that, those elements, that you see the gateway on the left, that's fully fleshed out with all the systems. Uh, we're building spacesuits, and of course, that is the HLS system that SpaceX is building for NASA. And finally, uh, this is very similar to the picture that, that Alex showed, except it shows the potential landing regions that NASA's gonna go, and they're chosen because of they got the right angle. Um, you don't wanna land on something that's too, too tilted. They've got light. They get that whole 60, 70, 80% of the light, uh, so you get power from solar until we have nuclear, which would be ideal as we go forward and we start building bases and things like that. And then, of course, they're near the permanently shadowed regions, which are the dark areas where there hopefully there's water ice where we can develop, uh, where we can develop systems. So I think with that, um, I think I've talked about exploration and we're good. So AC.